It's been a full year since we were singing the same song, sharing the same air, sharing the same space. And it feels like a distant eon, a distant memory almost. And it's painful when you think about how much the year has brought and how different our lives are today than they were just a year ago. The task before us is to discern God's presence. Where has he been with us? I don't believe God abandoned us. I don't believe that 2020 and the wake of it was an accident. I don't believe that our church and our youth group have been through this for nothing. I think God has done something, but what is it? When, when I'm in need of perspective, I like to come up here to the parkway. And there's a couple of really nice and kind of secluded viewpoints I visit. And from the top of them, I can see the ranges of mountains. I, I've, I've lived in this area my whole life. And I can see the, the Black Mountain Ridge. I can see uh, grandfather and grandmother. And, and over that ridge somewhere is my hometown and so when I'm feeling isolated or or even homesick right I come to these places for one reason perspective because when you can see where you are in relation to where you've been it changes the way you view everything and so what I want us to do in the time of the year that has elapsed I want to take you through the memories I want to take you through what we lived through again. And as challenging as that may be to replicate, I'm hoping that what you'll see is a story unfolding, one that we couldn't have seen coming. But what I don't see is a narrative of God abandoning us, of God leaving us to our own devices. What I don't see is a narrative of utter isolation and loneliness. Yes, there have been deep wrestlings and questions as we've lamented the pandemic, as we've uh, lamented the things that happened over the summer within our country and the divisiveness, as we've lamented the shift to our family and personal and extracurricular lives. We've lamented all these things together. But what I don't believe we're going to find is that God somehow abandoned us. My belief is that if we look and we reflect with honesty and openness, we'll see the presence of God. Let's go on a journey back into 2020 and relive the year looking for God's presence in our lives. So it was uh, a youth group night, Wednesday night per usual, and I got a you know, notification on my phone and something about the NBA closing. And then a youth parent came up to me when we were doing pickup and said, you know, you're probably gonna have to move the youth retreat. It's probably, it's probably gonna pass over. I, needless to say, it caught us all off guard. But meanwhile, guys, the youth volunteers were on spring break. So the next day, Hannah Siegel came over to my house and we shot a little video. Uh, hello, youth parents. It's it's me, Ethan, from... Oh, wait, wait, that wasn't a clear... I have to have like an audio break, so... <laughs> Begin again. Okay. Hey! <laughs> How are you doing? Uh, the world is a little different today, is it not? Uh, over to you, Hannah. Hey, I'm <laughs> Hannah. Thanks for joining us. I was thinking earlier today, just starting to feel a little bit discouraged. Just what am I going to do with all of this time? Um, why, why on earth would the Lord create this kind of space in our lives right now? Um, and I just felt him very strongly convict me in saying, we always run at this breakneck pace. And this might be an opportunity that we have to slow down a little bit. Hey, guys. I cannot believe that it's been an entire year since I have been with you guys in person. Um, gosh, I just, I remember back in March of 2020, 
when I found out that we couldn't meet, and I thought it was just gonna be a couple weeks, and then it just kept going on and on. I was just heartbroken that I couldn't be with y'all. This year has been a lot longer than I remember it. Um, looking back on it, I, there's stories I'm thinking of that I thought happened two years ago that happened like six weeks ago. Guys, I cannot believe it has been an entire year. Like, that just blows my mind. Like I said, we are here for you. We are here for your kids. We are here for anything that you need. If you just need prayer, if your child needs prayer because they're feeling anxious, that's what we're here for. We're not we're not taking a break for this. So, all right. So we're here. Oh gosh. So I said about the task of making sure that the the teaching, the Bible engagement, was done on video so that we could make the most of our time together. Oh, oh, you saw me. <laughs> Uh, mischief managed. Oh, sorry. I was just taking a quick tour of Hogwarts. Sit here with a laptop long enough and you're gonna get bored of what you do. Wakey, wakey. The coffee's bakey. At least that's how my my stepfather woke me up when I was in middle school. The pandemic hit during a time we were talking about the Songs of Ascent. And we were using Psalms to talk about a prayer language. I thought that really fit well with a lot more time to ourselves that we needed to engage God in prayer. Talk to you a little bit about Psalm 130. It's one of my favorites. Why don't you enjoy the view for a second and I'll grab that Bible verse for us to read. Youth, I felt the pressure to try to make what I was doing engaging because I saw you in the youth setting get bored while I was speaking in front of you. So I knew that <laughs> I had to engage you somehow, push my creative boundaries a little bit. I think I should talk to Nathan about this. Yes, my king, you've summoned me. Featuring the prophet Nathan. Nathan, I want to build a new house for God. Quarantine! <laughs> this is an interesting life, isn't it? Well, he didn't want people to know that you were fasting because you would get your reward from everybody like, Hey guys, I'm pretty awesome. I'm fasting right now, so I'm holier than you. Jesus was like, no, don't, don't, don't tell everybody. And so you're like, wait, what? So this might have been like, hey, uh, did you brush your teeth today? Did you wash your face? Did you put oil on your head? Uh, it essentially was uh, was kind of like a daily hygiene thing. Just uh, freshen up a little bit. Have you put oil on your head today? You know, just as ordinary as toothpaste? This has been a pretty crazy year. A lot of things have changed. I mean, COVID is obviously a big poopy face, so. A lot of cons for last year, there were the killer hornets, there was COVID, so we couldn't see our friends, we couldn't have in-person youth group. During 2020, I've been scared of getting sick, and like my other people in my family getting sick, and my friends and such, and that's just been a hard thing. And One of the ways that this has hit me the hardest has been with my relationships with everyone but like especially my friends and family because you know you can't see everyone and you have to stay at home and quarantine yes hannah was in town but the rest of the youth team were various places spread across and they weren't allowed to come back from spring break at the time and at that time we were doing three separate Google Meets. It's not. Is there a way to see everybody at once? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's me. Sorry. I think the most you can see is four. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I literally lost two running last night. So it's no oh, the whole computer is. We had a youth volunteer in Virginia. We had one uh, at the beach in North Carolina. We were everywhere. And guys, they showed up for you. We, we gave Google Meet links and they kept meeting. And I, I can't imagine 
what it would have been like to navigate without this team. And you guys know, as the story goes, our youth volunteers, ah, oh, they were there for us. They were there for you. They were there for me. So thank you. This team of people that continue to surround our youth weekly with the loving, prayerful attention of Christian mentors. And Hannah and Caleb started making videos of their own. Hello? Is this thing on? Testing! I miss you guys so much. I know I see some of y'all every Wednesday night, but some of you I haven't seen in forever. So I'm so excited to be sharing um, the message with you this week. You are constantly speaking to yourself. Good things, bad things, things about stress, complaints. You know, I really don't think that I did well on that test today. You know, the Bible promises that I'm never going to be alone and that he's always with me. But right now I just feel really isolated. I think all my friends are hanging out right now, and here I am doing the dishes. See what I mean? I told you, you talk to yourself all day long. We care about you here at the heart, how much your leaders care about you. We are here for you, and we know that sometimes when life throws a bunch of curveballs at you like this, and you have a lot of questions, it can be really scary. I'm going to close this out in prayer, and then we'll kind of hash this out in our small groups a little bit more. Join me now. Jesus, you are so good. I so enjoyed our time together. Together. I love you all, always. I hope that you have an incredible rest of your week, and hopefully I'll get to see your amazing faces really soon. And yet, there was something missing. Each of our small groups meeting in three different Google Meets, there was something missing. We wanted to be back all together, but how would we do it? Well, there's this wonderful software called Zoom. We had some youth volunteers stick around for the summer as well. Happy summer! You made it! You made it through the school year. We are so proud of you. Congratulations, everyone, for moving on to the next grade. I know we have some moving on to high school too, which is super exciting. I'm so proud of all of y'all. We are going to look at 1 Peter 2, 4 through 12, and what it says about the house of God and how this relates back to our own worth. In the summer, we shifted a bit towards Peter's first letter. And what drew me to that was the address line that Peter writes to a dispersion, a group of people spread across in a mountainous area. At this time, it was in uh, Turkey or Asia Minor. But I just thought that resonated with us, that we needed a sense of what invited us into a bigger story, how we were God's people. We are being molded every day more and more into the image of God. It takes a lot of pressure, right? You have to press on it. You're going to make mistakes along the way. It might not turn out exactly how you wanted it to. I'll leave you with this. If all of, the, if all of that can't convince you, then at, le at least remember verses 9 and 10, where Peter basically spells it out for you. It molds our hearts so that we're a little bit more like him every day. A little bit more like this father who Peter tells us in this passage never fades. The grass withers, the flowers will fall, but the word of the Lord is forever. And we get to become a little bit more like him. That's pretty incredible. I believe you have worth. I know God believes you have worth. That's the point of this section. Peter was writing knowing that the people reading this have worth because of God. God made us this way. It's hope. It's living and active hope. That's what First Peter is offering, right? This book of the Bible is offering hope to God's people. Thank you for watching the video, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the week. I can't wait to talk about this stuff at Youth Group. And we pray all these things in your name. Amen. We couldn't do many of the things that we had planned on doing, so... So we got on Zoom together. The gears began turning. Hannah was certain we could pull off a youth retreat. And per usual, she's very persuasive. Josh, Hannah, and I got together, brainstormed. A theme became apparent, hope in the dark. We needed the words of ancient prophets who had lived through some really dark times, even times where they were removed from their worship setting. I know times seem dark and it seems like there's a lot 
to be disappointed about by right now. And many of our lives are harder than they were before the pandemic. However, the biblical prophets, many of them had very difficult lives. And these guys wrote some of the most hopeful words in all of scripture. We needed their words. He had a very challenging life. He lived through some very dark days. And yet, Ezekiel has some of the most vivid images of hope, of the resurrection, of a new temple. So when you think, my life is hard, how can things get any worse? This is a really dark time. But in the midst of the darkest time, God gives his people some of the greatest hope. So we put together a digital retreat. Hope in the Dark, June 5th and 6th, a digital youth family retreat. The youth team and I are cooking up something special and I'm really excited to share the time with you. It was a total team effort and it was a blast to work on. I'm just going to hold this microphone like a news reporter because I've got great news to share. Good news. The good news, sir. So guys, this is meant to encourage. It is meant to inspire. It is meant to collect ourselves amid this dark moment. So my hope is that this interactive retreat feels as much like we're at a real youth retreat as possible and meets you where you are. There, in this challenging time, in this strange season, may we find words that orient and reorient us towards hope in Christ Jesus and the new heavens and the new earth. Even though we can't be together face to face necessarily, this is uh, still going to be a great weekend where we get a chance to uh, just spend a lot of time with each other talking about things like hope. And uh, I hope you understand and you recognize too just all the incredible work that the volunteers have put into this. And guys, Hannah knocked this out of the park. Are you ready for the challenge? You also gotta stay hydrated. This idea of a challenge. She came up with this huge array of games and activities so that the families at home that couldn't be together turned this weekend on the screen into something very enriching for their family lives. I have my letter written to Brecken. I put it in the mailbox. I close the mailbox and I put the flag up. I have sent a letter. You ready? One, two, three, four, I declare thumb war. Take team! Take team! My hidden talent is I uh, play guitar. And welcome to my tutorial of how to walk. First thing you're going to want to do is stand up. Fantastic, now you know how to walk. I can flip my eyelids inside out. Hey youth group, this is Josh. He was the person and his prophecy was the, the prophecy needed for a time of great upheaval. Ezekiel's prophecy opens with a chariot. This fantastical image. I don't know if any of you are familiar with MTV's old show hosted by the rapper Exhibit, Pimp My Ride. Those wooden wheels aren't gonna just cut a dime, you know? Ain't gotten, you're not gonna really drift with a, with a, a chariot. In other words, Time to go mobile. It's time to go mobile. It's telling us a message that God himself can go anywhere. While the people mourn the fact that they're not at the temple and at the place of worship, God is communicating to them, I'm here with you too. My brothers and sisters, be ye encouraged, if you don't mind me going old English for a second. Now you see it's a little more than just a lion's right. The book of Daniel has a little bit more depth to it. I'm going to get into that story, I promise. Just sit tight. But there's a lot to learn from the way that Daniel chose to live his life while he was in exile in Babylonia. Being able to hang out with my family more because when it was regular, like schedules, we were very busy and um, didn't see as each other as much as we do now and I just like connecting with them more. Needless to say, we had a blast. 
And yet, it was summer. How are we going to do digital life, life on a screen, in a summer? It was honestly just such a joy and a privilege to be a part of a team that rallied together um, to continue to just be together during a pandemic. We put on a virtual retreat. Um, we had virtual birthday parties and small groups and all these things. We got to be together and it was such an incredible picture for me of community, what true community looks like. And I will be forever better because of that experience with with you guys i'm a lot less sweaty leaving youth group than i used to be <laughs> i hope you enjoyed our retreat this weekend i know i had a really really good time can't replace that but don't worry i went and did a whole retreat by myself everything that you do normally do in a retreat by myself and i recorded it all so you guys can see what you missed up with a couple incentives to keep people involved. I miss meeting at Three Forks Baptist Association, you know, we used to meet in that building and we used to do some fun games together. And one of the very popular ones was a riddle challenge. We did the riddle challenge. We found new ways to have youth groups still together. We've been in this crazy new lifestyle. Since we have been in quarantine for almost a year, I feel like I've gotten used to it now. We're used to it now as much as we can be at this point after almost a year. After the youth retreat, we did want to give a little bit of respite. And we took two weeks off on either side of the middle week of July. And that middle week, we did a game night. Youth group game night! Woo! Let's get it! Yeah! Woo! Let's go! Youth group game night! Are you ready for youth group game night? I can't hear you. But for those other two weeks, we wanted to talk more about this prayer life since kids still had more time, less extracurriculars that they were involved with, more time at home. How do we engage our prayer life? And, and so we, we pressed into disciplines related to solitude. What is up, my youth group homies? July, I'm going to be putting out some videos, hopefully to guide you in prayer, which will be a topic tonight. Hey guys, for this month, while we're not meeting, in our normal digital youth group space, I wanted to focus a little bit on our time with God. I've been enjoying making these guided prayer videos for you, and this one, I wanted to mix it up a little bit. I want to introduce you to my friend Jerome. He's a former pastor, now he's a, an executive coach and an author. Okay, youth, uh, I am Jerome Daly, and I hope you're really doing well. It's been a challenging season to be separated in many ways. Drum, have you ever been distracted in prayer? Um, no, not really. <laughs> There's particular styles of prayer that invite distraction. So we're talking to God about the things that matter to us mm -hmm. and the things that, you know, that are, that are pressing on our hearts. I've been praying a lot and just meditating and just thinking and I think that it has worked. Being thrown off my routine is makes me anxious because I need a routine and... I have more time that I can spend with God, which has been really helpful for me. The number one thing that I miss is showing up early to the office or to Baptist and just getting time with my fellow leaders getting one-on-one -on -one time with some of you guys like i really being i really miss being able to do that we even tried a digital breakfast club that summer we're also going to do breakfast club so i'm kind of excited about that breakfast club in the club okay i hear you through my pajamas no one came you live you learn As the seasons changed, we had to say some challenging farewells. Congratulations on graduating. Well, John, I'm really in my bag.
about us not being interns anymore. Pretty awesome guy and I really wish we could have hung out more. Always bringing your A-game and your enthusiasm every week to youth group. Oh, and that makes me really, really sad. And I want to thank you for all the work that you've done for us over the years. John gives me a fist bump. He never forgets. That's like the thing I like most about him. You guys have just made us feel so special. I couldn't have asked for any other youth leaders. You have been there through with us through the highs and the lows. You've made us feel better. You just make our lives better. Hannah, she's like the most positive person I know. I'm trying, I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet because I don't want to cry. You're just one of the kindest people I've ever met. Thankful for what you've done for this youth group. You are really special to me and you are in my heart. Getting to do youth group with you is one of the best parts of my week. And you really made youth something that I looked forward to every week. When I moved away, just knowing that I wasn't going to get to get like a final goodbye from a lot of you just truly, truly broke my heart. And I hope that you all, that you all know that, how sad it was for me to have to leave in the middle of all of this craziness. Over this year, I've had a lot of time to like reflect and think about myself and my actions and kind of how I treat other people. This past year has been a struggle in a lot of ways. You know, despite COVID and stuff, well, that was, you know, a, tor a terrible thing. A lot of other things were kind of going on, which made it kind of bad. Amid all this, America was in turmoil. There was a sense that the kids were processing a lot of the current events, as we all were, kind of reeling from these, this wave of racial injustice, this wave of conversation related to racial injustice. And we wanted to develop a space for that. So over the summer, I was in communication with the youth team that would be in the fall, Caleb, Reggie, Lars, and Bailey. And we started uh, talking about this idea that we needed to be able to talk about race and racial issues. We needed to weave it into scripture. How did the Bible address the things that were happening? And how did it give language and shape to us having a way to advocate for justice? So we hit the books, the youth interns and I, man, they did such a great job. We went through each Sunday evening, the youth uh, volunteers and I would meet and discuss these heavy, weighty topics. And we wanted to prepare ourselves to engage this conversation with our youth. And we ended up settling into two different books, Jonah and Amos. Hey guys, imagine being in the belly of a fish near the bottom of the ocean. And Jonah may sound like a surprising pick, but we felt like it actually did give some language to the ability through satire, the satire of Jonah, to, to critique our own relationship and our own spiritual blindness within our nation. We often don't represent God well. We often are as much of buffoons as Jonah. I know I've been, and corporately speaking, the American church has been. For example, guys, there is a vibrant and amazing native church in America. Despite the terrible genocidal efforts of American Christians. What about the black church in America? Despite the American churches, and especially in the South, parading of, of slavery. What about the immigrant churches, in, especially in cities where uh, American Christianity has attempted to say that, that we don't want the refugee or the foreigner here. And American Christians have largely done that. Let Jonah be a mirror guys to our own failures as a church that oftentimes God works to advance his amazing and merciful story of redemption of all peoples despite of us. And then we hit Amos, whose relentless pursuit of justice gives voice to the concerns that we have about those who are oppressed in our society. Israel's being humbled by even its neighbors. If I can back away from the exegesis for a moment, 
and if you'll permit me to try to bring this text a little bit into the world of today, I think a similar phenomenon has happened here in the United States. You guys have all heard of the killing of George Floyd. You see, the world can see injustice too. And when the world says that our country has a problem with injustice, the whole world bearing witness to it. Just like Philistia and Egypt coming to see the unrest and the oppression confirming it in the nation of Israel. We too can be humbled, rebuked, humiliated by the witnesses around the world that may in fact be pointing out the kind of thing that frustrates God himself. So our conversations were weighty and challenging, but we wanted to be able to have this conversation. So we took a long time setting it up, and I believe God yielded some great fruit from that, ex that experience. May we acknowledge our failures. May we bear ourselves before God. And out of that lament and repentance, we find renewal. We find living water. We find Christ's character pervading our hearts, bubbling up like a spring that won't run dry. And what would come forth is a river of justice and righteousness that would bless and change the world. Don't you want that? As schools started to open again and we maintained an online presence this is what we were waiting through i would say the worst thing this year the situation school wise and covid it's just tough. everything was different and different isn't always a bad thing but we had to adjust i know some of our youth were just overwhelmed by the amount of time on the screen and have since uh, disengaged a bit from our times and at the same time there were people that navigated this pandemic and were looking for a space online to grow. The biggest struggle for me this past year is probably having to leave my old youth group when we went online they did not and so I had to leave and find somewhere else. I still wanted to be close to God. I think one of the worst things was my mindset. Not much else occasion creativity like running digital events. Yeah, we had the youth retreat, but what are we gonna do without the juggernaut of Hannah Siegel? Well, we ended up coming up with the idea of a youth talent show. And that was one of my highlights personally. I really enjoyed seeing what kind of talent you guys bring. Oh, it was cool. We also made these dope t-shirts. And we planned the strangest Advent event ever where we played the game Among Us and then followed it up with a candlelight devotional. <laughs> What's up everybody? It's your boy Logan. Youth group! The best place on earth has lasted a whole year online. In the wake of Jonah and Amos and these texts that were inviting us to wrestle out this uh, sense of justice, we were led uh, by Amos to look at the discipline of lament. I don't know about you guys, but 2020 shook me. I think it shook us all. And I think one of the opportunities of the lament prayer, if we learn this, if we take seriously this invitation to bring before God our protests, our complaints, even our rants. And we sit with him in prayer in that. I think there's something that God wants to do there, to reshape us. It's okay to be broken. Let's direct our brokenness.
We were invited to give language to our pain and process it before God. Something that we did together. We wrote lament psalms and we shared them with one another on our Zoom call. And that is a moment I will cherish the rest of my life, that we are learning to lament together. Then we went into Ruth by popular demand. We had some youth that really wanted to study Ruth, which is fun to say. So fun, that connection, that I, I had to rap about it. Did you know about Ruth from the land afar? Not my bride, no, I can't redeem her. Boaz says, that's right, I'm the kinsman redeemer. Said, Ruth's got truth, Ruth's got truth. Listen up now to a story that moves. You know, Ruth helped combine some of these themes, right? Because you have this, this sense of God's heart for the vulnerable and coupled with this opening scene of lament and then segue, right? It's about a people that in the worst of tragedies got woven into the story of God. As we seek perspective, do you see God has been with you all along? Maybe it wasn't in the way that you preferred. Maybe it wasn't in the way that you wanted. Maybe it wasn't in the way that you expected. But I believe, for all of us, God has been exceedingly present. For me, I've definitely grown a lot closer to God throughout um, all the different studies that we've done. But the coolest thing, and I'll say this to everybody, is y'all are dedicated at such a young age, and y'all have so much potential because it seems like you guys are just like sponges. You guys absorb everything we throw at you. When I think about where God was for me over the course of 2020, I saw him in you. I saw him in the way that you were holding on to your faith and your sense of openness to God in your lives. The idea that even in an unideal setting like a digital youth group that you showed faithfulness and you were there for each other, for the volunteers, and for me every week. You ministered to me through your presence. I've heard you guys articulate the same about each other as well. The positive reinforcement and whatnot was kind of sticking with me more. And that was really motivational for me. It will be better when we do just get to be like we used to, but I just am very grateful to God that my family has been safe and my friends have been safe. I'm just very thankful for you guys. I miss all of you so, so much. I hope you all know that I am praying for you constantly. I know that this past year has been a struggle to say the least. It's been a struggle for me. It's been a struggle I know for all of y'all. Um, so please know that you are in my prayers. I love each of you so dearly. Giving people hugs. I really miss that. Truthfully, I think it's been a, a lot more positive than negative. I definitely would still probably not want to go through 2020 again. I don't think anyone mm. would, but it wasn't all bad it had its perks too so i've also since then been feeling god's presence in my life a lot more just watching how i've personally improved in the last year has really shown me that um he's there for me and he never left but seeing that was really helpful still be able to hear more about god's word So I had to find a new church and that was really hard because they were close to being family. But a positive thing that's happened is I met you guys and now I hopefully will get to build that bond with this new youth group. And I'm very excited for new memories that may come. I've just been working on becoming like, kind of like a better version of myself, thinking of what I can do to treat people and myself better. I know that I'm a different person than I was last March when this started. But if this last year has really taught me anything, it's that no matter what I go through, I will always have people beside me no matter what. I know God's with me. I know I have a wonderful friend and family support system. 
and I have a lot of people care uh, that care about me. I've heard you guys talk about each other that way in the Zoom call, that you feel like this group mediated the presence of God. I have no doubt that that is exactly what has happened. God has been with us in the ministry of his word. That we, we dive into the Psalms, we dive into a letter from Peter, we dive into this ancient satire of this goofy guy named Jonah, we dive into an ancient prophecy of, of Amos, always relevant, is always fresh, it is always new. And when we attend to his self-revelation, we find ourselves growing growing and, and in the presence of God. This stupid virus goes away and I can come and give you all like just the biggest hug ever and we can play shuffle your buns and we can all eat all the crazy snacks and it's gonna be amazing. I have no negatives at this point other than I haven't met everybody in person. I miss you. I, w I wish we could do stuff in person but it'll happen soon enough. Spend a whole year apart but Together, I feel like that's been the motto of this year. <laughs> all of the odds stacked against us, all the adversities, all the challenges, all the hurdles, that we've actually grown closer in our year apart. I wouldn't trade this year for anything. It's such a blessing to do this for a year with y'all. I feel a little bit weird celebrating it because I wouldn't have necessarily like wished it this way. Like I miss the old way of youth, but I also think how can we not celebrate it because it was an entire year of us getting closer to each other and um, closer to Jesus like how can we not celebrate an entire year I believe we have actually gotten closer during our year apart I'm really proud of us honestly like I think the coolest thing to come of this is to see um, like how resilient and dedicated we all are to um, to getting to know the Lord together and getting to know each other. I believe that is only possible because of the work of the Spirit. I believe God has been with us all along. Instead, we got to catch up and do things you know, consistently, which was such a blessing. When we share our lives together at the foot of the cross, when we seek to make sense of this chaotic narrative we're wrapped up in through engaging scripture, and when we offer the vulnerability and the selflessness of Christian love. We can be shown a robust story, a, a real solid perspective on what we've been through and where we're going. Your friends, youth, need that confidence. They need that sense of security that you have in Christ. Even as we're blown this way and that way by all the things in our lives and the pandemic and, and the racial injustice and all the conversations about re-entry and all the division in our country, we can be people rooted into the presence of God and your friends need that. When we are weak, he is strong and God has been faithful this year. And we believe our God is a God who can turn the bleakness of a pandemic into the opportunity for growth. And if we're gonna get perspective on the past, why don't we go ahead and take a look at where we're going, the future. We are preparing to re-enter a space of in-person gathering. And we're making sure the protocol's all good to go. We're making sure we're doing as much safety precaution as we can. And if that just made you really nervous, it's a hybrid service. We're going to be gathering on Wednesdays digitally and in person. Absolutely love you guys so, so, so much. All right. Love you guys. Bye.